The University of Tennessee Medical Center is our region's only academic medical center. Our mission is to serve through healing, education, and discovery. Our goal is to share the knowledge of our physicians and staff in these health education videos as you make healthcare decisions for yourself and your family. Aortic stenosis uh, is a disease of the aortic valve. Uh, the, the valve is in the aortic position and stenosis means narrowing. The heart, which is about the size of your fist, has four valves that function to keep a blood uh, going in the right direction. That is, the blood should go forward and not ba backwards, just like any valve. When you're born, the valve is very pliable and flexible. And in fact, it looks, it has tri-leaflets and looks like a Mercedes-Benz sign. If the valve uh, gets stenotic or narrowed, then the pressure builds up in the heart, and that causes the heart to abnormally thicken or dilate, uh, can cause uh, major health problems. The causes of aortic stenosis uh, primarily are congenital, and that will usually manifest itself very early. You can have aortic stenosis from rheumatic heart disease, uh, which is acquired after uh, acute rheumatic fever or an infection. And then the most common cause is de just degeneration or calcification of the valve. At about age 75, one to two percent of the population have significant aortic stenosis. And at age 85, it's about seven percent of the population. So this degeneration of the valve, uh, which causes calcium and restriction of uh, motion, causes the valve area, which normally is over two centimeters squared, to get down to under one and uh, cause uh, problems. Diagnosis of aortic stenosis is usually made uh, by physical examination. So the narrowing of the valve causes a, what we call a murmur, which is turbulence of blood flow. So if you put your finger on a garden hose, it kind of makes a sound and accelerates uh, the uh, fluid as it comes out. So most doctors can hear aortic stenosis that's significant. To define the severity of it and to help with the causes or etiology of it, for instance, is it congenital, rheumatic, or acquired? Uh, an echocardiogram is a simple, uh, great test that lets us look at the valve in several uh, planes. And with the technology today, with Doppler, uh, and color flow imaging, you can actually determine how bad the gradient is or pressure across the valve, and then even calculate a valve area, which helps us assess the severity. The symptoms of uh, aortic stenosis are uh, very key. There's a long latency period, unless you're born with very severe aortic stenosis, it takes usually years for either a bicuspid valve, which is a congenital uh, problem with the valve, or the uh, calcific or aging of the valve to occur. So often, early on, there's no symptoms, and of course, there won't be much of a murmur. When the valve gets narrowed enough to cause symptoms, the key symptoms that patients need to be aware of are syncope, or passing out, chest pain, particularly if it suggests angina, that is, tightness in the chest with exertion, or congestive heart failure or fluid backing up in the lungs. So all the patients that we see in the office, we warn them of these three symptoms. The reason is once you have severe or significant aortic stenosis and develop one of these three symptoms, your mortality in the next six to 12 months is very high. And so that's one of the uh, keys for us that something needs to be done to treat uh, the aortic stenosis. The treatments available for aortic stenosis really evolve around uh, three or four items. Medications don't work too well for aortic stenosis. As you can imagine, when the valve is severely narrowed, it's sort of like the plumbing in your house. Medications really don't help much. You have to have the narrowing uh, opened up or uh, cleaned out. So medications are used primarily for arrhythmias or fluid retention uh, or blood pressure. The, Key treatments of aortic stenosis are, are balloon valvuloplasty, where you put a balloon in the, the valve, which is restricted and calcified and has decreased motion, and blow it up. That's easily done. However, we learned in the 80s that balloon valvuloplasty only uh, works 
uh, temporarily in aortic stenosis. So we use that primarily as a diagnostic tool or uh, as a bridge to some other more definitive therapy. The definitive or best therapy for aortic stenosis is to take the valve out and put a new valve in that's not obstructive. And this works very, very well, has a very low surgical mortality, and regardless of the patient's uh, age or their ejection fraction, they usually do very well. More recently, and what we're excited here at the university is there is a valve that can be placed in high-risk patients. So th these are patients that are in their 80s or 90s that have comorbid conditions that make surgery high risk or impossible. In this uh, case, the, what we call TAVI, which is the transaortic valve insertion or replacement, can be done on a catheter and placed in the valve, uh, blown up, and then it gets rid of the aortic stenosis. So this is a new technology you may uh, hear about or read about, and this will be available at our institution. We hope you'll join us soon for another medical moment. Visit utmedicalcenter.org or call the Healthcare Coordination Office at 865-305-6970 to learn about services available at the University of Tennessee Medical Center.